Before we get started with this video, I would like to mention that you can get started with part two of this series, which is the Blue Team series, by clicking on the link in the description section, where you will be required to provide your first name, last name, email and company, after which uh, you'll be provided with instant on-demand access uh, to the videos included in part two of this series. Uh, these videos include host-based intrusion detection with OSSEC, uh, memory acquisition with Lime, memory forensics, disk analysis, Docker image analysis, and incident response with FireEye Redline. So do be sure to check this out. Uh, the video is 100% free. All you need to do is register and uh, you'll be able to access the videos. So that's the lab environment. We can now get started with the practical demonstration. So I'm going to switch over to my Ubuntu virtual machine. All right, so I'm back on my Ubuntu virtual machine and you can see I have Linode opened up here. I haven't set anything up yet because we're going to be walking through the process together. I then have the Splunk.com website here. So if you're new to Splunk, then you need to create a new account in order to follow along. So uh, just head over to head over to Splunk.com and uh, you know register for an account. It's free. Once that is done, you'll need to activate your account or verify your account through the email, or the verification email they'll uh, they'll send you. Once that is done, we can then move forward because in order to access the actual um, Splunk Universal Forder you'll need to have an account. And of course, um, you know, in this case, I'll, I'll be going through everything as we move along in a structured, uh, in a structured manner. And then uh, to perform the actual uh, NIDS uh, tests, uh, we are going to be using the test uh, myNIDS.org project, which is on GitHub. Uh, so this is essentially a bash script uh, that allows you to, as you can see here, it allows you to essentially emulate or simulate uh, malicious network traffic. So uh, previously, we had used the website, uh, the website technique to essentially get a Linux UID and that traffic would be logged as uh, malicious or uh, it could be logged as a potential intrusion. And we can run a few other checks like an H uh, HTTP basic authentication, bad certificate authorities, uh, an EXE or DLL download over HTTP. So, you know, just we can run tests that, uh, you know, will just make our uh, intrusion detection system uh, blow up in terms of alerts and that's what we want because we want to see how that data is presented to us as a security engineer on Splunk. With that being said, the first step of course is to set up Splunk ES on Linode. So just click on, uh, click on create and uh, a Linode and click on marketplace and they already have Splunk here. So there we are, you can click on that there. And if you click on this little info button here, it'll give you an idea as to how to deploy it on uh, on Linode. And of course, you have more information regarding Splunk. So you have the documentation link there. So I'll just click on Splunk. Uh, once that is clicked, we can then head over here. You'll need to specify the Splunk admin user. I recommend using admin uh, to begin with and then specify a password. Uh, if you're setting up, uh, you know, Splunk on a domain, then you can uh, specify the Linode API token to essentially create the DNS records. That's if you're using Linode's DNS, uh, DNS service. Uh, and then, of course, you need to add the admin email for the server. So in this case, I can just say, uh, for example, hackersploit at uh, gmail.com. Don't spam me on this email because I don't respond anyway. So we can create another user. Uh, so this is the username for the Linode admins SSH user. Please ensure that the username does not contain any. So we can just call this admin. And then for the admin user, we'll just say provide that there. Uh, so the image, we're going to set it up on Ubuntu 20.04. The region, I'll say London because that's closest to me. As for the actual Linode plan, uh, Linode ES doesn't require that many resources, especially because, you know, the amount of uh, data that we're processing or the logs that are being forwarded to Splunk are uh, relatively few, so less than 100, which if you've used Splunk before for security event monitoring, you know that that is like really, really small. In, in, in fact, Splunk will actually tell you that, uh, you know, the amount of data uh, to begin with that uh, you have imported or you have forwarded is too little to make any sense of, uh, but that's where the Snort app for Splunk comes into play. So I'll just say Splunk and I'll provide my root password for the server and we can click on create. All right, now 
Uh, once this is set up and provisioned, uh, the actual installer is going to begin. So it's going to set up because there is an auto installer setup that will set up Splunk ES for you. So uh, let it provision. After that's done, you can launch the Lish console to avoid logging in via SSH. And of course, one thing that I need to that I don't need to tell you is if you're setting this up for production, then you need to make sure you're securing your server. So do only use SSH keys for authentication with the server. Uh, if you're new to hardening and securing a Linux server, you can check out the previous series uh, that we did with Linode, the uh, Linux server security series. Uh, that'll give you, uh, you know, all the information you need to secure a Linux server for production. With that being said, I'm just going to let it provision, after which we can launch the Lish console to see what's going on in the background. And we can then get started, uh, you know, officially with um, with how to set up Splunk. We then need to set up the universal forwarder. So uh, this is booting now. All right, so the server has booted and you can see I've just opened up the Lish console here uh, to essentially view what's going on. As you can see, it's uh, begun setting up uh, Splunk ES. So just give this a couple of minutes uh, to essentially begin. Um, and uh, once it's done, it'll actually tell you that and it'll provide you with the login prompt. Uh, but it's probably logged in as the root user already. So uh, just let this complete. I'm just going to wait for this to actually uh, conclude. All right, so once uh, Splunk ES is done, uh, or the actual uh, Linode is done here with the setup, you can see it's gonna tell you installation complete, and you can then log in. Uh, keep this window open because this is gonna be very important as we'll need to configure a few firewall rules because uh, by default, this Linode comes with UFW, which is the uncomplicated firewall for Debian, or uh, it, it typically comes prepackaged with Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu. Uh, in this case, it's already added the firewall rule for the port that we wanted, but just keep it open because we'll need to run a few checks. Um, so you can log in there. So I'm just going to log in with the credentials that I specified as the root user. And I can just say sudo ufw status. Um, and you can see these are all the allowed uh, rules or the actual rules configured for the firewall, uh, which is looking good uh, so far. So we can access the Splunk ES instance that we set up by pasting in the IP of the server and, and uh, opening up port 8000. That's going to open up Splunk ES for you. So just give this a couple of seconds. There we are. And the credentials that we had used were admin and uh, the password that I created uh, that, you know, of course, you'll, you'll be able to specify yourself. So just sign in. Um, and uh, once that is done, you'll be brought to Splunk Enterprise security here. So there we are, explore Splunk Enterprise. Uh, and um, in this case, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to start off with is uh, we need to go through a few configuration uh, changes with Splunk itself. Uh, so the idea firstly is to configure uh, the actual uh, rece the receiving of data. So if you head over into settings, you can click on under data, just click on forwarding and receiving. Uh, and uh, once that is done, once that is loaded up, um, under receive data, we need to configure this instance to receive data forwarded from other instances. So we want to configure receiving, and we just want to set the default receiving port. So we can say new receiving port, and the port is, of course, going to be the default, which is 9997, which is why that firewall rule was added. So I'll click on save. All right, so once that is done, we can now install the Snort uh, app for Splunk. So click on apps and head over into find more apps. And because the Ubuntu server is running or the Ubuntu VM that I'm currently working on is running Snort 2, we'll need the appropriate uh, app here. So I'll just search for Snort there. And we're not looking for the Snort 3 JSON alerts, although that you know could be quite useful, but we want the Snort alert for Splunk. All right, so this app provides field extraction. So that's really great because performing your own field extractions, uh, you know, using rejects can be quite difficult if you're a beginner. So fast and full, uh, as well as dashboards, uh, saved searches, reports, event types, tags, and event uh, search interfaces. So we'll install that. Now you'll need to log in with the Sp uh, your Splunk account credentials that you, uh, you know, that you actually created uh, on Splunk.com. So I'll just fill in my information really quickly. 
All right, so I've put in my username and password. So I'll just say I'll accept the terms and conditions there. So log in and install. That's going to install it. There we are. So we'll just hit done. Now that that is done, if we head back over into our dashboard, so I'll just click on Splunk Enterprise there. And uh, you can now see we have Snort Alert for, uh, for Splunk. So that's uh, it already comes pre-configured with a dashboard. Um, so we'll just let this uh, load up here and you can see that we don't have any data yet. So uh, this will display your events and sources, top source countries, the events, this is very important, the sources, top 10 classification. So that'll classify uh, your alerts uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, the type, which again will make sense uh, in a couple of seconds. Uh, so now that that is done, we actually need to configure the actual Splunk Universal Forder. So I'll just open that up in a new tab. It's absolutely free to download the Debian uh, client or the uh, the Splunk Universal Forder Debian package. So Universal Forders uh, provide reliable, secure data collection from remote uh, from remote sources and forward that data into Splunk software for indexing and consolidation. They can scale to tens of thousands of remote systems collecting terabytes of data. So again you can actually see why splunk is so powerful and why it's widely uh, used and deployed because of the fact that you can literally uh, you know be you can literally forward a ton of data from a ton of systems into splunk so because the uh, because snort is running on this ubuntu vm we need the debian package so i'll click on linux and we want the 64-bit version again you can choose one uh, based on your requirements so if you're running on red hat a fedora or centos you can use the RPM package. So I'll just download the Debian package here. Give that a couple of seconds. It's then going to begin downloading it. And then I'll walk you through the setup process. So there we are. It's begun the setup. I just want to take a couple of moments to thank our Patreons. Thank you, Michael Hubbard, Dustin Umpress, Jerry Speds, Doozy, Sid Saab, Ryan Carr, Shamir Douglas, Jojo Bibi, Balangos, Kush Kev, RS, Nino Buikov, and David Bricker. You guys are really awesome. Thank you very much for supporting us. And you guys make these types of videos possible. So we really appreciate it. And we look forward to producing even more high quality content.